bringing an axe to an arrow party. He should look at the Diamond Select, the Lord of the Rings deluxe action figure of Gimli. This deluxe action figure of Gimli is based on his appearance in Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. It features approximately 16 points of articulation and character-specific accessories. It also includes a part to build Sauron. Collect the first six figures to assemble the 13-inch tall figure. Gonna get down to looking at Gimli in a moment. First, though, I'd like to thank the folks over at Diamond Select that did provide this sample of Gimli that we could have a look at in this review. Gimli, as well as all the other Lord of the Rings figures we've looked at lately here on this channel, should be available right now in specialty stores and comic book stores if you're interested to pick them up for yourself. Grabbing now the tape measure just to see how Gimli stands. He's a little bit small in stature, but don't let the size fool you. He's tough as you know what. The figure stands at, in this case, about five and a half inches. He's actually got quite a lot of ways to go before he gets to that six inch height. No, he's about five inches, five inches tall. And that works out to be a figure that's about 14 centimeters in height. Gimli the Dwarf, meet Legolas the Elf. As it would have also been the case in the film, Gimli comes up short to Legolas, coming a little shy of being his shoulder. A figure, though, he's slightly taller, though, than is the Frodo. Gimli the Dwarf, meet Frodo the Hobbit. This sounds like a business meeting. Oh, I really hope it's catered. I figure, though, he isn't as tall as... Here's what he looks like next to Aragorn. Aragorn clearly is the tallest of the batch. I didn't bring in the bad guys. We've seen the bad guys enough in this already, these reviews. But at least the Fellowship is complete of four characters. There's certainly room still for more. But Gimli fits in well, proportionately, as it would have been also in the film. He's not quite as short as a hobbit. I'm sorry, Frodo, to keep pointing out that you're so short. But he obviously isn't as tall as Aragorn, and he certainly isn't as tall as Legolas. He's just the right size. Even though we still have a ways to go before we actually complete the entire fellowship, one thing we at least can say we've completed is Sauron, with the much-needed, much-appreciated last final step, as Gimli comes in clue with the helmet. What a great looking helmet this is. One of the coolest designs for medieval armor. It does have, of course, the metal spikes that stick up. Luckily, at least for me, they're not real metal, they're plastic. But just, again, good, good, get a good gander at how good that head sculpt is. So eerie. We can bring in where we've left things off for Sauron. One thing, unfortunately, that is missing isn't the helmet, although you would be right to guess that. One thing that is missing, though, is his cape. And I think there was actually a piece that was supposed to attach to the back of his torso. It was there, the first couple of reviews that I've done, and has since disappeared. I don't know where it went to. Whether I do end up retrieving that part, I guess technically I could even attach the cape somewhat underneath the shoulder spikes here. If I don't have the cape, it's not a deal breaker. What would be a deal breaker is if I didn't have the head. I really would need the head. I'm going to actually just remove the shoulders for the time being. I'm going to do that because I know sooner or later they're going to fall off when I'm trying to put on to the head. And let's just wiggle it onto the ball, ball joint. Now, I haven't yet done this. This is the first time I'm doing this, so I may even just have to heat up. Do I have it on there completely? Well, maybe I do. Maybe I don't even have to heat it at all. Then we could go ahead and add the shoulders once again. Yeah, I, I've committed to the idea, I think, of gluing the shoulders in place. The shoulders being something that could be removable, that makes no sense to me. I think I'm just going to glue them in place. That way they're never going to fall off. And this is what we've got left now from Sauron. Minus, of course, the cape. Minus, of course, his big clubbing mace that I'm going to grab and add on to him later on. But just to kind of put things in perspective... I always say put things in perspective, but just look at this. Look at this. Gimli comes to only about maybe, I guess, the top of his thigh. That's a pretty tall figure. Now, to be fair, though, we are comparing it against the likes of a dwarf Gimli, but still, that's going to be a pretty tall figure. And finally, I think we're going to do a review of him stand alone. Let's have him stand alone for the time being, at least, until we look at the rest of the accessories and wrap up shop here with a review of Gimli. Other things that come in clue with this figure that aren't Sauron related, he comes with various axes. Two single head axes, as you can see, of different design and different blades. 
This blade does have the pointing down blade. This has the more curved up swooshing blade. I guess really technically both axes would be fine for swooshing. The handles are slightly different, although the bottom end of it are more closer to looking like copies to one another. This one has a little bit of an extra cap on the end of it, but neat looking axes. I really like the look of these. These can fit either into either of his hands. I mean, he does have proper hands for holding it. And he also come with a double headed ax also as well. At the beginning of this review, I actually had him displayed with this axe. This might also be the go-to axe I'm going to use when it comes to displaying the figure. I don't know why I'm spinning it all the way around. There seems to be a place that I can find on Gimli that has storage for at least one of the axes. I don't see a second place. There's these ringlets, but I don't think they serve a purpose at all for holding the axes. But if you did want to display them at least with one of the axes, let's just, we'll go with this one. We'll go with this one. They all seem to be of the same size, although this one is going to be a much thicker handle, so you really don't want to use those. But either one of these fit well enough into that little looplet on the back of his belt. Just kind of slide it down in place right next to his pack sack, his roll-up uh, blanket, and of course a couple little packs there on the back that hold other things that you would need. Yeah, we're just going to put that right there for the time being. And like I said, he does have the means to hold an any one of the axes. Luckily, the hands are soft enough plastic very easy to remove or very easy to pry away from the palm and fit the axe in place. Now he has a gestured hand or more furious anger hand. And he does also have the same thing that would go on this side right here. The other hand, literally on the other hand, he also comes with a gripping hand that I've already taken the liberty of swapping out. Did you already do that ahead of the review? I, I did. I'm sorry. I kind of went ahead of myself here. But yeah, you just want to, if you want to change the hands out, although I kind of like the idea of him having more of the aggressive hand on the one side, but just for the sake of this part of the review, just to show you how easy it is to remove the hand. It's very soft plastic. Just pop that and unroot it from the socket of the, of the forearm and then just pop the new hand in place. And then once you have two hands for gripping, oh, you know where that's going to go. He does now have the means to hold both axes. Perhaps a little excessive, I don't know. I don't know if I would necessarily display him with two axes instead of one. Yeah, I'm probably going to just revert back to having him with, uh, just again, furious anger. Furious anger on one side and holding then the axe on the other side. Or I guess it doesn't really matter which side. One, one or the other. Removing the hands now from the axis. I guess we can also take away the axe on the other side too, because I'm sure we're going to want to get down to the articulation on the figure in a moment. Getting a closer look now at Gimli. Nice looking sculpt, I would say. Criticism, the only I would offer is the fact that I feel like his face is a little too pale of a likeness or pale of skin. I feel I would have maybe darkened his skin tone just a little bit more. I do like the personality. I do like the face that they've sculpted with his eyes and his quite large caterpillar eyebrows. This is really the only part of his face they would have to get the likeness closest to. Well, really like the bottom section just being his beard. I don't know if there'd be sticklers out there that would have to match the braids from the way the figure looks to the way it looks in the movie. I mean, if you want to, go ahead. But I think like the sculpting of the beard is really nice. The way the braids are slightly different. You have the more... Spent more time braiding the hair. If I was the, if my daughter was to leave the, the house to go to school with braided hair... This would be the work that the other person in the household would have done. This is how the hair would have looked like if I tried to make her hairstyle look like braids. I know it just looks like a disaster, but yeah, I like the look of the, I like the look of the beard. The beard looks decent on this figure. If anything, again, I would just maybe make the skin tone slightly darker than what we have going right now. No real complaints for the rest of the head sculpt though. I like the way they've also sculpted and painted the helmet added very intricate looking detailing done to the actual helmet portion, which I got to believe that they probably have used a darker, a darker plastic. And maybe that's the reasoning why the skin tone is as light as it is, because maybe they actually did use a darker plastic. Then they would have just dry brushed on top of it. Not to say that it is brown plastic, but maybe that would have been the easiest then just to brush the gold over top of it. It's certainly the most effective way of painting on details without actually having to go in there very delicately. You can just easily brush across it. And the thing that sticks out the most on the sculpting of the plastic usually is the thing that captures the paint as you brush it across. It's a very easy to way to do that. Uh, as for the rest of his outfit, it's a really nice replication of the way he uh, has it in the film. He has the tunic, of course, and then the chainmail uh, armor there on his arms. He's got these little plates that cover off the tops of his shoulder areas. He's also got the longer gloves there as well. It kind of really look like they were made of like a leather material. Really nicely done. 
The hands aren't quite the same plastic color as, as what we get the further up on the gloves, but still it's, it's close enough. I mean, really, like I would imagine this part to be the part that has to match the closest to this part of the glove. And I think from that standpoint, it's pretty close. The hands are nice and tight. I don't know which figure it was that we were looking at just recently. Was it Legolas? Maybe it was Legolas that had slightly looser hands. Don't have that problem at all with Gimli. He's got a nice belt here, sculpted well as the bu buckle there on the front. And he's got little ringlets there on the side that aren't something that you can hinge out. So don't try to pry those. You're going to break them in the process. Of course, he does have the pack there on his back, his blanket, a couple of little pouches there that would be holding stuff inside, and the little looplet there that holds at least one of the axes. The skirting of the tunic actually goes pretty far down, but if you peel it away, they've actually gone and sculpted the inside of it. Something, a, a place that you never really even look at. I mean, like, look at how self-contained everything is. What is the chances? What are the very chances that you would even be the one that peels that away to try to see what it looks like sculpted underneath? You'd be pleasantly surprised to see that Diamond Select spent just as much time sculpting the inside as they did on the outside. Nice detailing also done to the legs there as well. You've got some decently, decently sculpted boots. I like the look of those as well. And the figure does have, strangely enough, these little pegs. They're not so much pegs. I don't really know what they are. There are parts that the plastic that stick out a little further than the rest of their soles. I'm not really sure why that's there. It's not to the point where he has like foot articulate, like he has it up here, but he doesn't have toe articulation. So why those parts are protruding the way that they are is beyond me. I don't know why. For the articulation on Gimli, you can rotate his head back and forth. As you probably would imagine, his be beard sort of goes along with the rest of his head. So that's going to limit a lot of what you can actually do. You can rock his head ever so slightly to the back, but the most mileage you're really going to be able to get, considering as well he's got the long ponytail in the back, is only just to do this and this and this again. You can't really hinge it up and down or anything like that. Arms, though, at least aren't as limited. You can easily bring those out 90 degree angle bend. You can take the arms and rotate them all the way around. He has a bicep swivel, which actually they did put the plating of his armor just below the bicep. So where the cut is, it actually isn't hindered at all by the fact that they've, they've overlapped that. Smart on their part. There's a hinge joint here on the elbow. Uh, the only criticism I could also make is when it comes to the joints, you can see like they've left paint unfinished or maybe there was paint, but I know when I f first took the figure out of the packaging, moving the arms, it didn't seem like any paint was actually flaking off. It looks as if they left just the joint on its own, just left the molding of the plastic. You know, it, it does stand out a lot more and it was the case actually on both the elbows. I, I wish they could have used maybe like a darker gray for the plastic instead of the gray that they ended up using. I mean, it's the only thing, again, like when you're looking at the figure, we all know the fact that there's joints on these figures. We have to accept that. But if they could hide it just a little bit more than what they've done here. Anyways, he does have the elbow hinge. So you can, of course, hinge the, the uh, form back and forth this way. He does have the hands that rotate all the way around. You can hinge those also back and forth. Figure is going to be uh, having articulation in his torso. Although for a second, when you're looking at the figure, you don't think that there's going to be, but yes, there is. There is Virginia Santa Claus. It's actually just been below the belt area of his lower skirting. Again, you've got the skirt at least being softer plastic and they put the splits down the sides, allows at least the legs to hinge out this way. And you can also take the legs and move them back and forth this way. There is also a swivel at the top of the thigh. There is as well a single hinge only on the knees, which again are really tight on this figure. When I first did this, I actually thought I had broken it because I thought for a second the way they cut in the joint, but they do it more so so that you get the seamless look for the leg. But when you initially first bend it, you really start to panic and think that you broke the knee. That's not the case at all. Uh, as for the feet, they move back and forth this way. There's an ankle pivot. And again, like there's no toe, toe articulation, but strangely, like there's these things that protrude out the bonds of his soles. I'm not really sure why they're there, they're there in the first place. But nice looking figure. I like the look of Gimli. It, again, the only thing I would say is I would have darkened up maybe the skin tone of him. I feel like he's a little too fair in skin. I gr Granted, yes, I know he lives underground, but still, I probably would have maybe darkened him just a little bit. While I'm talking away as well, I'm bringing in the rest of the Fellowship. At least four of the Fellowship we can bring in. The only one again missing. There we go. It's Frodo. Uh, still looking at what we've got so far, not including the Orc, not including the Ring Wraith. Of just the human characters, or that's not that's not the best way to describe it. At least of the characters that have human actors, likeness-wise, I still think that Frodo is the best that we've seen so far. Then maybe Legolas, then maybe Gimli. 
Although Gimli is so hidden by most of his beard, I still think maybe he's a better looking figure than what we get got with Aragorn. But really a nice batch of figures. And actually now we've got ourselves a completed uh, Sauron, which we should have really a look at in a separate review. Overall, really nice looking figures. Like the way the Gimli did come across. And again, I just wish there was other places where I could actually store the axe other than just the one looplet there on the back of his belt. But overall, really, really happy with what we've gotten in this first wave from Diamond Select. Even though I did say I wasn't going to display Gimli with both axes in his hand because I thought it was a little excessive. Now that I've actually done that here in Final Looks, I'm kind of warming up to the idea of him wielding two axes. That seems like a very Gimli thing to do. Like one axe isn't nearly enough to be killing orcs. I got to be doing it with two axes instead. Now, even with him having two axes already in his hand, he still has one other axe. He actually has more axes than he needs. Still, though, I like the fact that they included all the three axes that come included with the figure, not to mention a pair of swappable hands, too. So if you want the more aggressive, angry, screaming at the sky, Gimli, he also comes included with those hands as well for either side of his arms. You can choose for yourself which way you want to display the figure. And of course, this figure finishes off. I had to wrap up the reviews with Gimli, not because Gimli was my least favorite character from Lord of the Rings. In fact, quite the contrary, just the fact that I did always, when it comes to building figures, I always like to leave the head sculpts last. And it's just so happened by virtue of the fact that the figure does come included with the head for finishing Sauron was more the reason why I wanted to have a look at Gimli last. Not only to look at the last figure from this wave, but to also finish off a really impressive looking Sauron that I'm definitely going to have to look at in his own separate review. Providing I can find that piece that goes on the back of his torso. I know where his maces are, but I don't know where I don't know where that part is that attaches onto that. I noticed right away that the cape was falling off. I'm, I'm veering off. I know I'm veering off on a side story. I knew that the cape attached to something. But the whole time I thought that it was already on the figure's body. And it was only until the cape fell off that I realized, oh, wait a minute. Where's that other part of his torso? I'm going to have to track that down before I get down to the review. In the meantime, though, I'd like to thank the folks over at Diamond Select that did provide this sample of Gimli that we could have a look at in this video. Have you guys at all been collecting the Lord of the Rings figures from Diamond Select? If you have... Weigh in. What do you guys think of the figure line? Let me know down below in the comment section. What's, what's been your favorite figure from this wave? What's been your least favorite figure of this wave? Comment on the uh, comments. Let me know down below in the comment section. And if you are new to this channel, you're enjoying the content that you're seeing and you haven't already done so, make sure that you hit the crucial subscribe button down below. It helps you. It helps me. It helps us to all grow as a collective community. And make sure as well you turn on the bell notification so you're always going to get those reminders every single time, every single time, hopefully all the time, a new video gets uploaded. And then popping up at the very end of this video as well, if you didn't have enough of Diamond Select to check out for today, there is also a Diamond Select review playlist. And it'll cover off everything I've looked at from the very beginning of this channel all the way up to now, at least of Diamond Select related stuff. Feel free to check out that playlist if you have a little bit of time available. We are going to definitely be looking at more things Diamond Select related. Not to mention as well, we are going to be looking at Sauron, providing, of course, I can find that extra piece. Lots of stuff coming your way, guys. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.